Uh, hello, I think nobody could hear you. Let's try this again. <laughs> As uh, it looks like my audio doesn't uh, doesn't pick this up. I don't know why. Wait a second. Some technical issues. But we will resolve this. Just a second. Mm-hmm. Could you say something, please? Something, please. Yeah, something, please. Okay, this time I think it should work. So, <laughs> would you uh, would you like to start again? Are we, are we starting over from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, or we can just go from here. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hello and welcome to the. Uh, European semi-finals in the Summer League. Uh, today we've got Ashun versus Gameslayer. My um, commentator, co-host here is Kirito. So hello and welcome, Kirito. Hello, uh, this is Ryan here, um, Kirito on the Discord. And we are here with Ashun and Gameslayer. Should be a very exciting match between a mono green deck and a mostly green deck. Yeah. I too was a bit surprised uh, with those uh, deck selections, let's say. I was expecting a bit more yellow, especially in the Ashun, uh, on Ashun's side, let's say. Yeah. And some red from Gameslayer. Mm -hmm. Ashun was uh, yellow in the, uh, the July qualifiers, and Gameslayer was red in the July qualifiers, so. They're both changing things up here, but they're both very good players that can probably be good with any deck. So, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, well, I'm gonna go tell the players they can start. Yeah, that would be perfect. So, if anybody has some uh, any problem, please let us know and we try to solve it. Um, looks like. Ash or Game Slayer won the toss and chose the Dark Vigilante. Or no, never mind. They just were both grabbing their outsiders because they forgot to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the victory conditions as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they probably want to know what the victory conditions are before they choose first player. Yeah, makes sense. So we have Hunting for Power, Obstinacy, and Right Breach. Now, okay, so I think Game Slayer. Yeah, Game Slayer did win the toss, and he did choose the Dark Vigilante. So I was correct before. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and it looks like Ashen chose first player. So, Hunting for Power, for those that have never played with it, is the uh, new victory condition. It says, Defeat the Outsider. When a hero declares an attack action targeting the Outsider, that hero's owner draws one power card. The Outsider can be damaged and is considered both a friendly and an enemy hero. Which generally is, is really interesting. Yes, it is definitely very, very interesting. Personally, not a huge fan of it, but I played a game earlier today and won with it. I just don't like, I don't like how it changes the game. I don't have put the victory condition, like in terms of, you know, win winning probabilities and stuff like that. More of a personal thing. So. Yeah, Ashun is picking Kotlik and Lakali, and on the other side, we see Sakol and Nelaklen. Yes, so Ashun has a team of all six green heroes, and his deck is called Green Wall. Uh, and Game Slayer has a list of four green heroes, does not have Kotlik, and does not have... Uh, who's the other one? They have? Slaka no, he has Slakali. One of the other green heroes. And he has Hogosai and Fred instead. Yeah, he doesn't run Isha Tosk. Yeah, yeah. You got there right at the same time you did. <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's uh, see what's happening in the chat. Of course, has yeah, yeah. Of course, hunting for power comes up. Yeah, true. And of course, I get disconnected. Everything is going just as expected. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> First streaming together, and everything runs perfect. I mean, if I didn't get disconnected, this would have been a very abnormal game. Mm. And this is why uh, we had somebody other than me create the table. Because this way, I'm the only one who got disconnected instead of everybody getting disconnected. Yeah, my uh, YouTube is still arguing with me. But uh, as long as the live stream is running, I think uh, everything, everything will be fine. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe we can optimize this in future. So Gameslayer is thinking uh, a bit right here, taking his time a lot uh, yeah. for picking the the uh, missing two heroes. So Hokusai is going in. Yeah, the, the Cole and Nelican can kind of be used in any situation, so he's probably trying to figure out if he wants to go a little more for obstinacy or right breach, would be my guess. Notably, his right breach is control token 2, so Ashun mm. does have the advantage on the right breach. And uh, Game Slayer's deck, by the way, is called Plus Twos of Doom. Both very good names from, from both players. Yeah. So in Game Slayer's deck, you won't find any card with a 0 or minus 1 modifier. So only uh, positive modifiers, which generally is uh, pretty aggressive. For sure. Um, and with, I mean, the three heroes he shows so far, I believe he there goes, has... There goes Akla. Okay. Yeah. So Akla and uh, Hogusai have all plus twos, except for the <laughs> ultimate. Neliklin has... A few plus ones, like presence, for example, and the Cole has a few plus ones, um, but also has some plus threes in Psychic Shield, so it averages out to plus twos. So very high modifier deck. Um, Ashen's last two heroes were Ishitas, or last one hero is Ishitas. So his deck, um, the four tiers he got. So he has Tlakali, Ishitas, Kotlik, and Nelikon. Does have a few copies of, of slides, which do give him some minus ones. His modifiers are definitely not as high, but he mm -hmm. does have access to some cards that Game Slayer obviously doesn't. Yeah, which maybe gives him some more potential uh, for crowd control, maybe. Let's say, like, slight negating attacks or um, pushing heroes out of, uh, out of a control token. So, yeah. Okay, so once they remove their HP tokens, we can uh, refresh the HUD. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Ashen to get rid of his. Yeah, already seems correct to me for Ashen. Boom. There we go. Um, those HP numbers do not look right. <laughs> um, which one? Ah, okay. Hokusai. Okay. What happened to Hokusai? <laughs> 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 okay. 
as far as we can see, it's got 17 HP. Oh, so maybe it's just maybe it's just, just wrong on mine because I got disconnected. But I'm seeing most of them at zero except for Colic at 18. So probably just a problem on my end then if you guys are all saying it correctly. Yeah. So first move, a Shun, a classic move. Let's say moving onto the lane, putting a pillar uh, on the side for a protection of the own minions which is defending his left lane so defending against right breach yeah so the and fact that Sakali is in his left lane might mean that he's trying to go for obstinacy or hunting for power mm, or he's planning on them placing pill on the other side afterwards and then protecting both yeah. and then may plan to use Ishatos to swap over the right lane on turn 2 or something like that yeah let's say really Pretty classic move with uh, with a green deck player controlling a bit, so you you get uh, to move your uh, Trakali first, of course, to just uh, at least defend one lane. Yep. Interestingly, uh, Game Slayer did not bring Slakali. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty weird for green decks, at least from my perspective. I feel like games that uh, green decks usually want Slakali. Mm. It's, it, it's not a must-have, I think. Uh, depending yeah, on yeah. wind conditions and the way that your deck is working. So... For sure. On the other hand, we see Game Slayer moving two hexes with Nella Clan. Okay, flipping a plus two against the minion, and Ashun lets the minion die. Didn't want to take a five damage. Oh, losing five HP, which is more the, the more correct term. And uh, lead from deck. So my guess is he really is more concerned about the right lane and is planning on placing a pillar on the right lane and is going to try and put right breach. Ashen, that is. Probably based on the fact that Game Slayer didn't bring Slakali, he's probably... I would assume that Game Slayer is probably not going for right breach and is probably going for either hunting for power or obstinacy. Yeah, I think obstinacy. So... There was, let's say, um, a Mario move on Ashun's side with Nelaklen, more or less. So moving in Nelaklen on his right lane, on his right side, uh, putting a pillar down and a lead from hand, as far as I can see. Uh, that's what it looks like. So because the Kali can see a pillar, she can protect minions adjacent to all pillars. So Sakali is protecting the, the pillars on his right lane. Yeah. There so goes. This, would be, yeah. this mm -hmm. is a five damage attack. Mm -hmm. I think Sakali is going to take the HP yeah. this time. Uh, Ashun is still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would I would be surprised if uh well I, I would see it either way, but I yeah oh. that's that's what I would have done. Yeah, but five five really hurts. It does, but I think I think he's going for right breach here, and I think the fact that he took it kind of definitely indicates that as well. Yeah, yeah, with Nelaklin putting a lead from hand, so we can be pretty sure it's a three mana card. Yep. Uh, I was trying to refresh the overlay, but uh, Hokusai is still blacked out. But we'll try to keep you informed about the HP if something is missing. Yeah. Blame Giacomo. <laughs> Even though he had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> this always works. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
always valid. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, too many options, right? And this in the first round. Yeah. <laughs> I could see Ishitas do something where like he worships and uh takes him and Kotlik all the way over to those those minions in the right lane. Or I could see Kotlik just, just going over there and killing a minion. No. Kotlik yeah, first. It looks, it looks like Kotlik just gonna go over and kill a minion by himself. Or yeah. I guess the dome also exists. Mm-hmm. Maybe a skirmish. But he can't really uh, okay. Warship action. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a warship. He just wants to grab yeah, yeah. the the pillars that are the right color. <laughs> and elite from hand. Ooh. Contesting a dome. Dorn Vigilani is a, a strong outsider. Yeah. Uh, Game Slayer really, uh, let's say, kicked us in the 2v2 league <laughs> just, <laughs> just by uh, using a, a deck with uh, really good modifiers and using Dark Vigilante. And that's what his deck is. And he did that. That's exactly what he did here in the July qualifiers as well. He's a mm -hmm. big fan of Dark Vigilante and high modifiers. That's. I would say that's his play style. It doesn't matter what heroes he uses as long as he has high modifiers and Dark Vigilante. Mm. Looks like uh, there was a mark against uh, Kotlik. So Kotlik finally is down to 11 HP. Yep, and it looks like, at least on my screen, Hogo size HP is showing up as 13 now. Oh yeah, finally. Mm -hmm. so maybe I it was it just. just... Me move first. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it. Uh, it was just playing around a bit with the with the HP token. It looks like all of my HPs are actually starting to show up properly as long as they get touched. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, touch those HPs. <laughs> yeah, good. Good question. Ethan, so maybe he's setting up, uh, so Gameslayer maybe setting up to destroy the Dark Vigilante since he goes second. So if you're wondering about noises in the background, uh, this is a thunderstorm going on. <laughs> okay, I don't hear anything. Okay, then it's fine. But hopefully uh, the internet will keep on running and the... Uh, <laughs> and electricity as well, hopefully. Well, if it doesn't, or even if, or if that does happen, or even if it doesn't, um, I should mention that Gameslayer has his own YouTube channel and is streaming the game from his perspective as well. So, if we do for some reason lose the stream, yeah. or if you want to see it from both perspectives, uh, you can check out the um, the game from his perspective as well. Um, I don't believe he's streaming it, though. I think he's recording it. Yeah, and he'll he's be uploaded recording. Later. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think he's recording and wanted to upload it. Yeah, so he will, can upload that later if anyone's interested. Yeah, but we want to see it live. Oh, of course. And that link will be posted in content by GameSlayer when it's ready. Yeah, for sure. All right, so looks like Ishitask is moving. Not sure where, though. The hand is hovering over his right lane. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> could you tell me if Gameslayer exhausted his heroes so far? Because only uh, Hogosai is exhausted. Yeah, the other ones are, show are exhausted, but the, the HUD isn't showing it properly. Aha, uh -huh, okay. But his Akla and Neliklin are turned sideways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. 
yeah, move skirmish, attack through Ishatosk. So putting more pressure on Ashun's right lane. Yeah. Yep, not not surprising. So yeah. Game Slayer could go and take the dome here. With uh I think that's what it's gonna do with the skirmish here. Mm-hmm. He didn't lead with Hogosai, but he can just he can Oh, okay, oh, well Kotlik is Skirmish playing. isn't gonna Skirmish isn't gonna hit Kotlik, but Yeah. Yep. So that was a stone barricade. So that pillar that just went down there is going to be a blocking element too, so a furthest activation. So Zakol cannot step onto that hex where that new pillar is. Mm hmm Yeah, it was showing Oh, I've got Oh my god. Now I <laughs> He's trying to figure, trying to put it on the right hero. Yeah, the the problem is what I'm uh, seeing now. Ah, okay, there yeah, the hot shows correct. Kotlik, yeah, finally. <laughs> Some issues <laughs> on the hot. He was moving it around between all of them. <laughs> yeah, where is Kotlik? Can't find Kotlik. <laughs> so. I think games they might have been moving it around too. I think they might have been trying to fix something like on the hut. I don't know, but. Mm -hmm. Maybe something wasn't showing up right. Yeah, it's showing the messages like uh, which hero is playing which card, and it was showing like uh, Ishatosk has has been playing the card. So there was, yeah, was <laughs> some issue on the on the hut, on Ashun's side, but. Yeah, it, it also they might have moved around to try and fix something. Maybe the uh, the mark condition wasn't showing up properly on Kotlik, so they were moving things around or something. Yeah. I don't know. So now Game Slayer can't decide on where to put the uh, pillar. And this is a game where we are seeing a lot of pillars. Yeah. Uh, Probably a lead from hand here. Yeah, there it goes. So, so that, that should give him the dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the advantage of going second, right? So you can see how the, the board evolves, let's say. Definitely. Yeah, and as soon as... Really an advantage on his right lane, since this is lane number one, resolving first, and could be very interesting for right breach. And I think he's... Uh, he should have... One, two, three, four, five, yeah, it's a three on the Lachlan. So it's four miniatures plus, plus three. Ah. Gameslayer used Akla's ultimate for leading against Ashun on lane number one. Yep, yeah, probably probably doesn't want to lose that lane by much because mm -hmm. that's if that that's where Ashun I think at this point is pretty clearly going for a right breach. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of walling uh, Akla. Into minions or putting minions around Akla. <laughs> His deck is called the Green Wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> yeah. This was his plan from the beginning. Just use the minions as a wall. Yeah. So on the other side, on lane number two, Game Slayer is winning by one. Yeah. They each had one here and one minion, but uh, Nelix lane led with a one. Mm hmm. And yeah, as expected, there there are another there are another um, ultimates gone now. <laughs> yeah, supernova for yeah. Game Slayer and mm -hmm. a thousandth ritual for Ashen. Also, I missed this before, but. At some point during that first round, Nelliflin cast Sky Terror Discharge to deal damage to somebody. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, Nelliflin, which there Nelliflin? was a Sky Terror. Ashun? Uh, Game Slayer's Nelliflin casted Sky Game Terror Slayer's Discharge. That's probably 
I think he did it when Ishitas was going to move over into the right lane. So when he moved through that white line, he took some damage, which is why Ishitas is at yeah. 14 instead of 17. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so Dark Vigilante is down. That's going next to Game Slayer's left tower. Yeah, I think he's going to um, defend his... Uh, his lane, his left lane, so that it's going to be even harder for Ashun to get the. Oh, it was only he was only taking away one minion, and now dealing damage to Kotlik. Yeah, I'm gonna assume he's going after. A... There's a, an attack. Yeah, so attack, here's I probably a, a minion. Um, uh, kill. Skirmish, a piercing skirmish, and then yep. an attack, would be my guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to guess, based on the fact that he went right into the dome and went right after Kotlik, that he's probably going for obstinacy. Either that, or actually, I'm, he might be going after hunting for power. That's a spot that's kind of right in between all of his heroes there. Yeah, Yeah, it's like in a line, let's say. And every hero uh, within maximum three hexes, just to get a reach. Hmm. Yeah, so he can get to the outsider with everyone, which is probably why he brought it there. Uh, okay, so Dark Vigilante, just for the other people to know, he's got 19 HP and one armor. Ashen has not used the flux yet, so you can probably expect to see some three mana card use him this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, cards he has that are three okay. mana would be sinkhole, rampant hatred. That's it. So, hello, chat. Nice to see more people having a look at the game. It's the semifinals. Oh, Everyone wants to see it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So gathering, gathering strong by Sakali. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it truly would be fun to see, uh, to see um, Ishatos take. The Dark Vigilante for right. <laughs> Ooh. Not bad. So Ni nice healing effect. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was a a plus three on the heal. Mm -hmm. From Sakali. Yeah. And uh, another ultimate gone. <laughs> Flipping Ishatosk ultimate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Kotlik was down to like 6 HP before that, so that probably made sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was uh, thinking about the possibilities, uh, questioning myself why did he put it right beside Kotlik, but this obvious, obviously now makes sense. Not, <laughs> not only the, the plus one uh, armor, Kotlik is getting through the pillar. But also the possible healing effect through Takali's warship action. That was a, a minus one on the attack. So, which, of course, was fine because it was me. Yeah. Still a dead minion. All right. So this is this is where we'll probably see whether. Game Slayer is going for obstinacy or hunting for power. He's probably going to go attack something here. Yeah. Although he might decide to go protect minions instead. No. <clears throat> I played a game earlier today where I went for hunting for power, which I've never really decided to do from the beginning. So, um, wait a second. Yeah. yeah so Oculus attacking Kotlik. He, he can't do that. He has... He has a pillar 
Uh, oh wait, he... he hasn't. He now has a pillar through stone barricade. Yeah, now he's yeah. going to do the attack. Mm -hmm. Makes and sense. And because there's a pillar adjacent to Kotlik, and he can see a pillar, he can attack. He can see Kotlik. And back to six HP. But now we know his decision. He. It looks like he's going to fire obstinacy. Yes. And, yeah, but will he be able to kill him? And then he has to come back and kill him again. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, kill him uh, ready, still ready. So yeah, to if get he doesn't, back the if he doesn't kill him this activation, which it doesn't look like he will. So there, there goes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if he doesn't kill him this activation, which it doesn't look like he will, um, I think Ashen should activate Kotlik next. So that way, if he does end up killing Kotlik, he won't come back until round four, mm -hmm. which will give him plenty of time to get the right breach. And at that point, I feel like Game Slayer is going to have to either push the right breach or go for hunting for power. Mm -hmm. So there was a warship action removing. The pillar next to Kotlik, dealing one plus two damage, so three damage in total, losing two HP and a lead from deck. So because uh, Tlakali removed the pillar next to Kotlik to heal Kotlik before, uh, Kotlik no longer had line of sight to a pillar, so he did not have the plus one armor. Mm -hmm. Correct. And he survived. Those yes, are he did. He's the, at four, four now. the four HP which he got through the healing, through the washing. Yeah, but he did take two extra damage that turn by not having the armor, so he would have survived at two otherwise. Mm -hmm. Which is still net two HP. Uh, okay. So, yeah, true. Maybe Game Slayer wants one hero dead so he can go last twice on turn three and kill Dark Vigilante. Mm. That's a good point. Mm. Why should it be one more damage? So who is Ashing yeah. going to act? Yeah, like as I predicted before. This is going to make it very difficult for yeah. Game Slayer to get obstinacy. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Kotlik is going to move over to the right lane and probably kill a minion here. He's going to try and affect the lane as much as possible before he dies, if he would die. And there goes his ultimate. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a minion that I've seen a lot of people in the Discord describe as being very powerful. Mm hmm. It is. I have never actually seen it played, so I uh, I can't speak for how powerful it might be, but I can see how it can definitely be powerful, and I will take the words of people who have seen it played. <laughs> I can tell from my experiences using him and having played the ultimate also some uh, sometimes, it really has effect on, let's say, when there are controlling victory conditions, it really can save you. Or let's say yeah. turn around the game. Yeah, there are a lot of pillars on on the map right now, so I can definitely see how something like that can be quite good. But yeah. he does not have it. Mm -hmm. And it's round two, so. Yeah. I believe um, Neliklin's ultimate is the only one we have not seen from Ashen. Mm -hmm. And he still has 13 cards left in his deck. So, we it might be a while before we see those cards.
Yeah, I'm curious if if uh, Game Slayer really is repositioning his heroes. So Ashun is obviously going all in for the for the right breach, maybe. And it, it seems like that. Yeah. The uh, Ashen's minion in the cover hex is uh, the only one of his minions that is not protected by a pillar. Ashen's minion in the cover hex. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think Kotlik, it would make sense for Kotlik to try and place a pillar did he, or did he already worship? Yeah, him? he worshipped he and did. he placed a pillar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, over the there to protect, side. too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think it's for protecting. Because uh, the minion would have been protected through the uh, other pillar. Hey, my, uh, my earbuds just died. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, you're still online. Okay. okay, cool. I'm uh I'm on speaker right now. If um anyone has trouble hearing me, um let us know. But hopefully that's not an issue. It's always second round going into with even more options. Then let's say round one, you're a bit prepared and you have some kind of strategy going in. And round number two, uh, you saw the game board evolving and then you have to make some decisions. And obviously, there are too many possibilities always, I think. That's it's, uh, my thinking always. I agree, except for the fact that you said you can have a plan uh, on turn one. You can think you have a plan, but as soon as you see the victory condition slipped, <laughs> the whole that whole plan can go completely out the window. Cause, <laughs> depending on what the victory conditions are, because sometimes you see the victory conditions and you're like, "I have no idea what I want to do here." <laughs> <laughs> so we see a skirmish by Hogosai and Ishatos reacting with a stone barricade, putting. A pillar between himself, so between Ishatosk and Kotlik. So Hogosai wasn't able to reach uh, to get yep. into reach. And at, the, and at the same time, that last minion is also now protected by Tsukali. Mm -hmm. True. It looks like that a warship. Was, um, that was a very good use of that stone barricade, too. Also, that was Kotlik who used it, not Ishatosk. Yeah, uh, sorry. And there's a Norish played through Ishatosk. Yes. Uh, in response to Hogosai worshipping. Mm -hmm. And a lead from deck. For now at this point, at this point we've caught like at 5 HP that um that heal from Sokali earlier. Oh, there's no... definitely saved uh, Kotlik. Hmm. Definitely. There's some... And that looks played Overflow. This yeah. is one of the new cards. It's the first time I've actually seen it played. So for people who are like me who have never seen it played, it's an action, two mana plus zero. It says draw three power cards, then discard two power cards from your hand. So, so he drew three, and he's discarded a granite skin. And deciding on the second card. In the end, uh, you stay with the same hand size, let's say, but you at right. least get two, no, three new cards. Yeah, so you played the card, you drew three, and then discarded two. So, including the card itself, you keep the same hand size. Yeah. But you basically get rid of three, you, you get rid of three cards and get three new ones. Mm-hmm. And he discarded two granite skins off of it. Interesting. So he's not going to be offense, uh, offensive. Yeah, I, I think he's going for the right breach at this point. I think that's 
abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, attacking a minion. <laughs> Vaporized by and, an uh, And yes, uh, from the, the Discord, Smurl, yes, there are lots of green people. <laughs> <laughs> Except for um, on Ashen's side, because his are tinted blue. They're green people, but they're also blue people. I feel like at this point, Game Slayer cannot go for obstinacy. I feel like he's going to lose the right breach before he can get it if mm -hmm. he keeps going for it because to defend against the, the right breach, he's going to have to lose actions that he could be using on them. Yeah. Um, Smurl, the little circle numbers next to heroes in the mod is the mana left. Remaining mana. Of course, Tapeworm answered that already, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I answered it verbally, so that makes it automatically better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's a relevant question for anyone else listening to the stream who might not be looking at the Discord. So yes, the little numbers next to the hero icons show remaining mana on that hero. You can also see the conditions next to the hero icon. So if you look at Ashen's Kotlik, you can see that he is marked. Mm-hmm. Which, in this case, as he's in line of sight of Hokusai, means he's, uh, his armor is reduced by one. This is true. Okay. So, Game Slayer's Nelakalan is activating, moving into the dome, skirmishing, so obviously changing lanes. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's trying to finish off Kotlik here. That'll get Kotlik down to three. Still trying to kill Kotlik. Uh, Got another some... Nourish, perhaps? Mm -hmm. He does run multiple copies. Oh, no Nourish. That's going to that's gonna be a dead Kotlik. Boom. There goes the first hero. So but... if game if game is going to win through obstinacy, he has to wait until turn four to be able to kill Kotlik. So if he is going to go for obstinacy, he's going to have to survive until then, as a not lose to right breach. Yeah, and that really is uh, a challenge. Yes, but it can definitely be done. He could also go for hunting for power next turn as well. Mm hmm Yeah. As having four heroes instead of three for Ashun, he now has more options. And, yeah. Yeah, it definitely is easier to defend when you have more activations. Mm hmm And the next turn he's going to activate his last two heroes in a row. So Game Slayer is activating the last two heroes in a row as his second player. Uh, there's nothing on the HUD that currently shows the outsider health. Uh, but I true. believe that is I believe that is on the to do list. Um, that being said, um, the outsider has not been damaged yet. Um, his starting HP is 19 and he has one armor. But Tapeworm should definitely add that to the HUD. <laughs> because he doesn't do enough already, obviously. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. 
Uh, it's fantastic work. Really, a really fantastic work. Helping the stream to be really professional. To give a good overview about the game, game state and everything. So this is really, really good work. Oh, Ashen uh, moved Ishitat into the dome and is attacking the outsider. Yeah, that's new to me. But uh, I think he has, he has to draw a card when attacking. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just doing it for the card advantage. Mm -hmm. There's no more. There's no more minions to kill, so he's probably going to move over there, attack the outsider to draw a card, and then going to uh, probably skirmish back into that lane. <laughs> Flipping a minus flip one. Mi flip the minus one on that, so the outsider lost zero HP. Yeah. So still at nineteen. And I'm going to guess that Ishitas is just going to move skirmish back over into that lane to add the extra control. Taxi time. Hmm. Oh, uh, Sky Terror Flux. Overflow. Overflow. Yeah, so again, shuffling a bit through the deck. And yeah. Changing, <laughs> changing hand cards. Yeah, it makes sense that he is uh, that he's doing that too, especially considering all the ultimates that he saw earlier. So get he wants to get through that deck so he can try and get those ultimates next turn. So there's there's a stone barricade gone. Uh yes, because Kotlik is dead. So you you you're supposed to remove the cards from a hero. The heroes when they are defeated. Oh, yeah. They just forgot to get rid of it earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh, now they're putting it back? <laughs> now they're going to rotate it a few times? What's happening here? <laughs> it's okay that Ishatos uh, is showing up a minus one on mana because he used the sky tier flux, correct? Yeah. Correct. Uh, it looks like they didn't discard it. They're leaving it there. I think perhaps the game player was unsure about whether or not it was supposed to actually discard and was saying it's supposed to stay. Uh, we could say something to the players, but as there's still four cards left in the deck at this point, it doesn't actually make a difference. So mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where it is, so we can just leave it there for now. But when here's defeated, you are supposed to remove, discard all face up or all face up and face down cards from the hero. And if I'm wrong about that, I'm sure someone will tell me, will say something in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I'm fairly confident about that. There's elite. Oh, so he's doing a lead from deck instead of. Mm -hmm. instead of skirmishing into the right lane. Which is interesting. I thought he would try and push that right lane. But I guess he is... She's not. I guess with Sokol being the only hero left to activate on Game Slayer's side by leading in the dome, it forces Sokol to stay in there if he wants to win the Dark Vigilante. Yep. So that's a warship. Yeah, and dealing one plus damage to a minion. Oh, reshuffling his deck. Plus two, it's three. He can protect it through Telakali, I think. Yes. Yep. And yep. I imagine he will. Yep, he's ping in the pillar. Mm -hmm. So Telakali is down to eight HP. Yep. Nine. 
Lead from hand. Yep, because he has to try and beat Ashen's lead from deck. Ooh, crippling precision. Okay. <laughs> and an attack <laughs> against the outsider. Yeah. I I yeah, so that's gonna deal uh drop the Dark Vigilante four HP. The Dark Vigilante is now at fifteen and is slow. Hmm. <laughs> Did he draw a card? And I pushed away a hex. I don't believe he did. Because he was at 5 before he played the Crippling Precision. Okay, oh, the... he just drew it now. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to draw before attacking, but as the deck is randomized, it shouldn't technically make a difference. <laughs> mm, yeah, but now he would have drawn... What is it? Unstoppable? Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it does change the cards in his hand, but there's no real way to fix that at this point. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know which order the cards were in beforehand either. So it's only Nelaklin? Oh, um, Akla led, with a, Akla led with a zero. Oh, wow. So it's three damage to the tower. Yeah, because Hogosai <laughs> led with a 1. He led, Game Slayer led with 2 darts, cards from deck, a 0 and a 1. <laughs> <laughs> if Ishotosk had stayed over there, that would have been that tower would be at 1 right now instead of 2. Okay, Kali led with the 2, so that's going to push that control token 3. Game Slayer should place his minions. There we yep. go. And another one. Yeah, finished a toss lab with a one in the dome, but it was from deck, which and it forced. Yeah. It forced the call to lead from hand. Mm -hmm. Ashen is clearly playing a card advantage game here with the uh, Gathering Storm and the two overflows. Even though they both have the same number of cards in hand right now at five, uh, because of the two overflows, he's been filtering the cards more, so should have cards that he wants more. Yeah, true. Not necessarily true, but that's the theory behind it, at least. Mm hmm. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> the Dark Vigilante <laughs> wants to stand on top of Nelephant. <laughs> he Nelephant has enough arms. He can hold the Dark Vigilante there and still yeah. do things there. I don't really think that he needs to use his arms. He just uh, lets the Dark Vigilante fly around with his magic powers. But... Down to 6 HP. Ooh, and another ultimate. Yep. Try and... Is that a dead Nelephant? No. Uh, yeah, okay. Not through the uh, Dark Vigilante, but... Um, oh, down, uh, down to 2. Yeah. That did 12 damage to Nelolin on the, the, that turn there. I guess he's thinking uh, he, he could have done some damage to, I think, two minions there. But I guess he figured, well, killing one hero will help, will, will do more than two minions, I guess. Mm hmm. Which is reasonable. Yeah, Nella Clan also, is generally quite squishy with uh, only 14 HP, zero armor. 
the Dark Vigilante should not be slow anymore. True. You are, in fact, supposed to remove conditions after at the end of the minion phase. <laughs> so, Ishatos through the overlay now is with zero HP, but I think it's just because the uh, the token is a bit off. A bit of the board. Um, I think it, it's showing Ishatos twice. It's showing Ishatos to 14 Oh, HP yeah, true. <laughs> it just, it's showing Ishatos to zero instead of Kotlik at zero, but that's actually Kotlik at zero. <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah, tape room. This this uh, HUD is still bugged. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Lord of the Many by Neliklin. How many can you see? Four friendly minions. So this is going to be a plus four skirmish from Neliklin? Mm-hmm. Trying to trying to activate Nelequin before he dies. Yeah, and dealing the damage to who? Probably, Nelequin. probably the other Nelequin or Hogasai, I guess. Unless he's gonna move adjacent to Aqua. And he plays Norish. So back to five HP. Yeah, not sure why the nourish was used right there, though. Hmm. What's happening there? Why is he pinging? Don't know. Over there? We are missing something. Was that a worship from Nelequin? Oh, that's a worship from Nelequin. He removed a pillar to discard the cards and generate more mana, which is why he used the Nourish there, because he wanted to use all the mana first. Ooh, then a Rampant Hatred. Okay. So, a oh. lot of the many Rampant Hatred. So... Uh, Nelequin's worship ability says discard all face of power cards on Nelequin's hero card. He may play power codes as though he were in the same hex as the removed pillar. pillar. Mm -hmm. So he was using the power card from the hex Ishatos was in. Although it doesn't actually make a difference because whether it's from that hex or the one he's in, he still can only see one hero. Or no. No, it's. I guess if he was in that hex, so he would be able to see himself and Ishatos there. Mm hmm. So that was plus two from that. So he now has plus six on this skirmish here. Mm hmm. Shuffling his deck. And flipping a plus two. So that's so, eight to. Is this Aqua? Uh, he, he was pointing, pointing to the Dark Vigilante, I think. Yeah, the Dark Vigilante. Oh. Yes, that was the Dark Vigilante. And now he's going to declare a skirmish here. Uh. Because the first skirmish Don't was the free one off of the uh, Rampant Hatred. Yeah. But I think he forgot to put in the uh, Warship action. Yep. So that'll be seven piercing to the Dark Vigilante. That's game. Whoops. Oh my god. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah. That, that surprising. That came out of nowhere. Yeah, so Nelequin, thank you. with Lord of the Many and Rampant Hatred. So if anybody right now saw something popping up through Windows, Xbox, my kids are playing on the Xbox, so <laughs> <laughs> they got an achievement. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Good for them. I'm proud of them. They achieved something. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay, uh, shall we give wow. them just uh, another minute to talk a bit about it, and then we join them? Because yeah, uh, for sure. That was that was f for me really <laughs> surprising. Um, 
I let's agree. say Back... was was this some kind of one trick pony let's say or was this just through by shuffling through overflow and other things drawing the right cards what do you think I... I think that might have actually been uh, that might have actually been planned there. He he played uh, on turn two. He was a gathering storm and two overflows. I'm guessing he was yeah. he was looking to do that, and that was his plan all along. But I definitely didn't see it coming, and I am fairly certain Game Slayer didn't see it coming either. Mm -hmm. They're discussing about uh, maybe options or the plan that Game Slayer had. So yeah. Do we wanna do we wanna go join them? Yeah, we're going to join them. Yes. Hello, well, I still everybody. Have call and uh, it, but... Hello, uh, hello. So yeah, but you uh, yeah. stop you. <laughs> yeah. But you are now live. Hello. Yeah. Ashun hi. Yeah. Uh, he Slayer. went first, so he got to do his thing first. I was just gonna one shot it as well. I shouldn't have attacked it. I guess. I guess I shouldn't have attacked it. But then again, that wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah, he still yeah, could have done attack attack at the end there. He still had an attack's worth, which he would have had to have flipped a minus one or a zero for that to not work. But yeah. Um. So, uh, am I assuming correctly that you both had the same plan in killing the outsider? Yeah, I I had consult in the heart rampant hatred from turn two, or maybe it was even turn one. And I was like, all right, outsider's just dead. I just gotta survive then. Hmm. Okay. Um, because I'm hitting the outsider for uh, approximately 24. <laughs> I think that'll kill it. <laughs> uh, sorry, what? <laughs> Did you just So you say... break this pillar, and then you're doing a plus three on Rampant Hatred. You've got two Rampant Hatreds and then a Skirmish action. So that's nine. Sorry, so that's, so sorry that's three, and then six, and then six. So that's 15. Uh, then you've got the attack, so that's 18, and you've also got four flips. So that's yeah. about 24. Game Slayer, can you please stop breaking the game? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it that's, was, that's yeah, impressive. I mean, he went yeah. first and he got it. Yeah. Um, I, I, mean, it, I had Shield Slime in hand, but Hoaxai was one tile too far. Mm. Yeah, true. And he probably and he had Sinkhold stop it anyway. But... Yeah, and also Shield Slime wouldn't have done enough. Mm. Yeah, because Norish. Well, yeah. in response to Norish, maybe, but yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I had the sink call. I was playing around uh, that. Yeah. I was. Uh, what, I guess what I should have done. Yeah, mm -hmm. what I should have done, honestly, was uh, just move the outsider over here at the start and then just go and kill him. Mm. Yeah, Heinz, um, but you probably didn't expect that Ashton was going to do that. Um, I didn't expect that he was going to do what he did because he discarded Rampant Hatred at the start of the game. So I expected that this was not going to be his plan. But. I expected he was going to try and kill Nelaklin, which is why I have Psychic Shielded, obviously. Yeah. But of course he had enough to kill the Outsider if he had enough to kill Nelaklin. Yeah, that was... I definitely didn't see that coming. I I, I kind of figured you were going You were going after Hunting for Power. I thought Ashen was going for Right Breach. You didn't see me drawing cards uh, the whole uh, turn two? Yeah, do we saw you drawing a lot of cards and let's say shuffling mm -hmm. through your deck by overflow and. Um, yeah, I was later looking return. for a lot of the money. Uh -huh. I had a good shot of killing it uh, outside on turn two, otherwise, if I had a lot of the money with the flux. Yeah, with, I, I guess maybe I could have. Well, my outside did a ridiculous amount of damage to Nelaklin. Maybe I should have gone for Nelaklin instead of Colic. I wouldn't have killed him that round, but Tower would have lived on one. So, Ashen, you were, you were planning from the beginning to. Uh, kill the outsider. Uh, sort of. My deck uh, deals very well with uh, hunting for power, so it's always a plan. My main issues was uh, not losing to obstinacy and mm -hmm. finding a win uh, either way, uh, either via hunting of, for power or right breach. The problem in turn three was uh, since I was not getting a, right, a, a quick red right breach, was uh, not losing to hunting for power at this point. Mm. But now, since I uh, I can go first, uh, I at this point, I have to go. I have to try it because I'm pretty sure he was going to do it otherwise. Yeah, My third option yeah. was to play more, draw more cards this turn, keep the snow blind that is card in hand, and uh, disarm his guys with Nakran uh, and hope he doesn't do enough damage. And then Uzi uh, Shatosk to bring the outsider away so that it's safe while he has to worry about the bridge. But 
Hmm. Yeah, when I, as soon as I get a lot of the money, I think it will probably become a similar. Yeah, that was really cool to see the Lord of the Many into uh, into the uh, rampant hatred like that. That was that was that was pretty cool, and I'm sure um, the viewers really enjoyed it as well. <laughs> uh, question for Game Slayer: um, mm -hmm. Am I? Was did you win the toss? Yes. Okay, as I thought, you won the toss and picked the Dark Vigilante. Yeah. Uh, is there a reason you didn't choose to go first? Because you were just saying if you had gone first, you would have won. Um, because I felt like if I had Dark Vigilante, won him at the start, I uh, maybe didn't need to win by the Dark Vigilante kill and could have won through obstinacy instead. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty close um, to killing that, but I also felt that it, I needed to get to round three, right? And I was worried about right breach happening round two. Um, I mean, I won by two. I, I survived by two points. Lord of the Ancestors, if I let him take that, that might have stopped that. Uh, but That's you're right, true. maybe I did just not think turn one was valuable enough. Um, mm -hmm. um, I knew Nelicon was a threat, but I thought Kotlik was the bigger threat. Um, with all those gathering storms and overflows, I thought it might have been a rampant hatred mind... Uh, a Rampant Hatred Mind Palace with Kotlik as well. That that was something that I had to worry about. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And with all these pillars on play, I was like, I don't think he can get to the damage with Nalclan, but he can with the Kotlik. You know, that was the actual play, wasn't it? It was just to spawn the outsider and then just kill all the minions, then he wouldn't have any, had anything to Lord of the Many. I did. Um... Yeah, that's that was the other thing. On that last turn when you activated the Dark Vigilante and went after Nelaglin, I was I was surprised you didn't go for the minions. You could have killed two minions there instead. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should have maybe I should have just killed two minions and uh Well, the Nelaglin would have So I did three. I think so you should start from here? No, you no, I start, I'm start from, I start from the same place and, and I kill these one. two. Okay. So I have a lot of the money for two. two. Mm -hmm. So four, and then uh, four, eight, nine, ten, eight, eleven, uh, and then three, yeah. nine, eleven and three flips against fifteen. That's not very likely for your deck. Eleven uh, to fifteen? No, it's uh, it's uh, doable. Yeah, I have a plus doable. on average. So you were you would have you had exact damage on that, and with two minions left, you would have done four damage left, but then had an attack. So you just needed to flip a plus one. Yeah, yeah. Although if I hadn't have attacked the outside, I don't. I shouldn't have bothered attacking the outside. It was there. Was there? Was there? Cole? There, the coal. Um, because <laughs> then it would have still been at full health. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? What? Because again, I had twenty-four damage going into that game, that round, and I knew I had twenty-four damage. What was the thought process when you decided to uh, go for Nelflin with the Dark Vigilante that turn? I'm um, sure there was a reason for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason for it was if he didn't have the way of killing Nelflin. If he didn't have the way of killing Dark Vigilante himself with Nelaclin, um, he might have had some sort of protection. And so if I just fought, put Nelaclin to two health, I can activate Hogusai, finish Nelaclin off, and then he's not got that Nelaclin well of mana to then protect the Dark Vigilante. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, I think is that as long as you are not expanding exactly of the money, attacking Nelaclin was the right choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you flipped a lot of the many earlier, but I, yeah, yeah. I didn't think you could get to where you got, but you did. It was definitely impressive. Yeah, yeah. and I'm annoyed because I would have done the exact same thing, and everyone would be like, "Oh my god, you just did 24 damage!" <laughs> but you did it first. <laughs> um, I genuinely think that hunting for power is an absolutely horrible objective, and uh, I said that when I saw it. It, I think, it will ruin games. <laughs> Um, and I just keep getting disconnected from this, so I'm not even yeah. bothered. You are not good for a minute. Because <laughs> <time. laughs> um, yeah, it was going to be that... very difficult for me to win if it wasn't for that hunting for power anyway. I, I said that at the beginning. I don't like hunting for power as an objective. I, I, I don't think it's like the whole winning through killing the outsider is necessarily a terrible idea. I think the fact that it changes the rules of the game is what bothers me about it. 
but that that's just my opinion and I'm yeah sure my problem that... with it is the fact that the dark that the outsider can't defend itself and is very fragile mm -hmm. no matter which outside you go against you're not stopping an elephant from just killing it yeah i mean you can always use like an impervious or something on it but yeah or but... a nourish yeah which is great against an elephant as we all know uh, well, nour nourish works. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nourish and sacrifice. But there are, there aren't, definitely aren't as many ways to protect an outsider as there are ways to protect. You know, if you could have the outsider play psychic shields, that'd be that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might fix that's all what, the problems. That's what they thought when you played psychic shield. shield. It was like, oh my god, they can psychic shield outside. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be interesting. I assumed I couldn't, but maybe I should have checked the rules channel because yeah, it is you... zero cost. Uh, no, you can you cannot play uh, cards from the outsider. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Has to be a hero. <laughs> Whoa! So, um. I think we can finish it up here. Yep, right. uh, that was a very fun game to watch, guys. Uh, congratulations, Ashen, on going you. to the European finals. Indeed, hold uh, on. Uh, and Game Slayer, congratulations on making it all the way to the semifinals. Thank you. Um, which, to, in my opinion, is kind of the quarterfinals because the real finals is finals is America yeah. versus Europe. Yeah, sure. yeah. that's what the, the European and semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. The European finals are going to be Italian. Yep. yep. Yeah, we were depending on the game slayer. We were, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you both. Uh, GG, well played. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time back here on the next live stream for Sky Tier. Have a good night. Have a fine, nice day. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.